Hello and welcome to the course. I'm really excited to have you on board. Well done for getting stuck in right away. So here we are at the beginning of the course and I, before we get into any VR, I want to have a little go at telling you about the structure of the course as well as how you as a student can get the most out of it. First of all, let's talk about the structure. So it's broken down into mainly three topics. The first topic being movement, the second topic being user interface, and the third topic being interactions. Okay, so with those three topics, we are doing a section each and a project per topic as well. So in the movement section, we're gonna be doing an architectural visualization. And the main aim of the section is to show you the various ways we can get around VR sickness. The problem that if we need to move around in a space bigger than the space the user's actually got available in their house, they might feel sick. And we are gonna tackle various techniques for doing that, but we're also going to have a look at what their limitations are. They're not all any of them perfect, so we need to know what situations you can apply them in and the pros and cons of each. Then we're going to be talking about user interface in the second section where we'll make a little 3D painting tool. Now that's interesting because you notice the first two sections are already not games. You think of VR, you might think of gaming, but in actual fact it goes a lot further beyond gaming, such as McLaren engineers use, uh, McLaren designers use VR to design their cars and create the shapes of their cars in three dimensions. It gives them a better feel than doing it on pen and paper. So that's a really interesting thing for VR and for user interfaces in general. We need to solve problems such as how do we make use of these depth, in depth information. You know, we can use that in our design to indicate things such as importance. Or we've got VR that's all around us. Where is the most ergonomical place to put your user interface? All those kind of questions we're gonna be dealing with in the second section. Then there's interactions. That is what you might think of with, typically with VR as hand controllers, where you can interact with the world by touching things, picking things up, pointing at things, and so on. Now we're going to create a project in this section called Laser Archery, where you're gonna be able to pick up items from your quiver. This is actually the first game. Uh, lock the arches, the bolts into your quiver, into your bow, and pull, aim at targets. It's gonna be really fun. It's gonna tax the interaction system, and we're going to find out a lot about interaction in VR. So that is the overall view of the course from a very, very high level. Now, how do you, as a student, get lots out of this course and really make a transformation in yourself? Now, the key to that is putting a lot into the course as well as just watching the videos. And I call this engagement. So how do you as a student engage? Well, there's four levels to it. The first one is just following along with the course, the first step on this pyramid. Now, following the course means watching the lectures. It might seem simple, but often people find they just don't have the time to even do that. That's because they don't make time. So make sure you schedule some time in figure out how you're gonna take the course, how many hours a week or how many hours a month maybe for you if you've got too many time commitments, but do try and keep yourself accountable. Maybe use a B minor to do that or tell a friend that that's how you're gonna be doing it and they might keep you accountable. Anyway, enough about just following the course, that's the basic steps. The next thing is to attempt the challenges given it in every lecture. We do a challenge in every lecture, make sure you pause the video and give it a go, even if it's hard, even if you don't actually know how to solve it, just the process of trying to tackle the challenge will teach you a lot. Then you can enhance the project. You can go a step further than we do in the lectures and you can think, oh, I'd like to do, implement this in my project. Go and do a little bit of further reading and have a go at implementing it. Even again, if you don't actually manage, trying to go further than the lectures is a great step. And finally, top of this pyramid is to apply or reapply the knowledge from the lectures to your own projects. The most successful students have a passion project on the side and they will finish a section, such as the movement section, and go, okay, how can I apply this knowledge in my project? And they will go and reapply the knowledge. And obviously that cements the knowledge best of all, and that's what we're all aiming for. Now, don't worry if you can't get all the way up the top of this pyramid, it's the hardest step is at the top, obviously. So give it as much of a go as you can, get as far up as possible, and just keep pushing yourself to go a little bit further but don't worry and don't beat yourself up if you can't make it all the way to the top. Okay, so that is engagement and we're talking now a little bit about how you should take the course. Now, what about the community? 
This course has a very active community. Let me show you what I mean by a community. You might be thinking just of the Udemy Q&A, and we do have that too. If you go to this lecture down at the bottom, go and browse the Q&A, then you'll see that this is our Unreal course. Obviously, this course is not yet published. I'm recording this lecture. But we have the questions here in the Q&A, and it's very, very active. Loads and loads of questions. And you'll notice that these questions are getting answered by either myself or Ben or a teaching assistant. And you can see that they're getting marked as top answer. Now, beyond this, if you go to the Resources Available tab in Udemy and go and look for a link against the lecture called This Lecture's Discussions, you'll notice every lecture has one of these. And if you click it, it will take you to our very own community.gamedev.tv forum and it's taken to us to a very specific place that is in the Unreal section in the intro first section and it is got this tag which is specific to the lecture. So if you create a topic in here, it's associated with the lecture automatically and the list here is only of topics related to that lecture that we clicked from. Now you can go a level up if you want to and click no specific lectures to see everything in this section or alternatively you can click none for the section and you can see everything in the Unreal se section for example or you could even go all the way to the community route and you can see all of the courses. So you can navigate up or down as you see fit, but the best way is to go from the resources link because it'll take you right in to the section for the lecture. And then finally, we've got our Discord channel, which is a live chat server you may have heard of. The invite to that is attached to this lecture. Okay, so these are the different places, but how do you navigate them? How do you know where to go and share or ask a question. I've got this little map for you. So first of all you have to ask does it have a right answer? If it has a right answer by that I mean something that could be marked as the correct answer then the best place to go is Udemy. For example I'm gonna ask does why does my code not work? Clearly this has a correct answer someone can say you're missing a semicolon. So it goes on the Udemy Q&A over here and you can see that if you go to the Udemy Q&A and you ask a question like this, then you can have a top answer marked. And that helps other students see what the answer to your question was if they have a similar one. So do make sure you search first to see if there are any similar questions first. If it doesn't have a right answer, such as here's my game, give me some feedback, or what's your favorite VR pl platform, then you'd go over to community.gamedev.tv and create a new topic with a catchy title to grab people's attention and ask the question there or share your game and include as much flashy screenshots and videos as possible to engage people in that. And then finally, if you are stuck on Udemy and you can't make any progress in the course or you are not really getting the exposure you wanted on the community of gamedev.tv, then you can go and cross post these on to Discord. So how would you do that? Well, if you're on the community and let's just go and go into any topic here, then you can see this is the URL. You can copy the URL and you could go over to Discord, paste it in and say, hey, I've got this share that is not getting enough attention. I was wondering if anyone has some time. Be polite and ask them whether they have time and get some more um, some more exposure for your topic that way. And alternatively, if you want to cross post from a Q&A question, the way to do that is go to this little dot 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 menu, go to open a new tab, and then this will be the unique URL in this tab for this question. You can copy it and go and share it in the Discord channel and say, hey, I'm having a problem with this question. I'm really stuck and give them a summary maybe over here and they might be able to point you in the right direction and get you unstuck quicker. So those, that is the map of the community. Now we're going to get a chance to use this in this challenge to share your goals. This is your first challenge slide. This is what they look like. Now what's going to follow is a little description and then you can pause the video and give it a go. So what are your VR goals? How do you plan to follow the course? How do you plan to keep yourself accountable and make time? Do you have a side project that you're going to be reapplying your knowledge to? What platform have you got? Have you got an Oculus Rift, a Vive, something else? And what are you looking forward to? What is the section that you're most interested in? What exact topic are you most looking forward to seeing? So pause the video and have a go at sharing this with the community using the map to find the right place to share.
Okay, welcome back. Now, hopefully you paused it. That is the second level of the pyramid to actually attempt the challenges. Okay, so hopefully you navigated and said, well, this doesn't have a correct answer. No one can mark a top answer. So I need to go over to this lecture. I need to go to resources available, this lecture's discussions. Then I need to sign up or log in and create a new topic, give it a catchy title and share the answer in there. And then I might have taken the URL for that topic, gone over to Discord and shared in there and said, hey, I'm new and here's my goals and I'm just here to say hi, something along those lines. So bonus points if you went to Discord as well and hopefully you did manage to use the map to take you to the community.gamedev.tv website. So that brings us to the end of this lecture. You have learnt what's coming up in the course. We're going to have three sections, movement, UI and interaction. Then we looked at the pyramid of engagement where the base is going to be to follow, then to attempt challenges, then to enhance your project and then to reapply your knowledge to other projects of your choosing. And then we looked at the community which consists of Udemy for things that have a top answer, this community.gamedev.tv for shares and anything that doesn't have a top answer has more of a discussion slant. And then we talked about Discord, which is the live chat server where you can go from there. Now, one more point about the community is only as strong as its members. So make sure when you are asking a question, you're also trying to find a question that you can answer. And that when you are posting a share, you're also trying to comment on somebody else's share so that you're paying it forward and the community is as vibrant as possible. Now, I look forward to seeing what you guys are going to share in response to this challenge here in this lecture and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.